This is the Mercedes AMG CLK 63 Coupe Black Series, and it's a super rare, very cool car. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all about it the upgrades that you have over the standard CLK 63. I'm also going to talk you through the mechanical changes, the interior changes. Some interesting things have happened inside that cabin. And of course, the engine upgrades. I'm going to take it for a drive, see what it's like, and I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is or isn't from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Mercedes has done six Black Series vehicles so far. Now, normally the Black Series is the pinnacle of the range, but not in the case of this CLK, there was actually a DTM version which was even rarer and even more expensive and then there was the CLK GTR racing car which was like super rare and super expensive. This was actually the second Black Series they made. The first was the SLK 55. Now let's talk about pricing on these cars. So back in the day this thing would set you back around £100,000. Went on sale in 2008 and in fact they only sold 600 of them worldwide in that single year and that was it. 2008 your lot. As a result, these things have held their value extremely well. Back in 2008, it would have cost you just £30,000 more than the standard CLK 63. One of those now, for a good one, will cost you between twenty pounds and £30,000. A decent one of these will still cost you £100,000. This one, because it's low mileage, 20,000 miles on this one, about £120,000. Now, this particular CLK Black Series could be worth even more because it's rumoured Jeremy Clarkson used to own it. In fact, he posted a picture of this very car on his Twitter feed back in January 2015. If you're interested, I'll put a link to that Twitter post in the description of this video. Now, if you're thinking about buying a CLK 63 Black Series or even a normal CLK or any used car for that matter, it's important to get the car's history checked to make sure you aren't buying something that's been stolen, it's got outstanding finance or has accident damage, which has been badly repaired, which could put you or your family at risk. And I recommend for doing that, you check out Car Vertical. So I did a vehicle history check on this particular car and thankfully it came back completely clean. However, there are plenty of used cars out there with problems. So look, here's an example of a car on Car Vertical that has come up as having previous damage. And the good thing about Car Vertical is that you can actually look at some of the damage photos. I mean, look at that. <laughs> so you can see the kind of damage that has been done to a car that you may be thinking of buying that you had no idea was ever damaged. So if you're thinking about buying a used car, make sure you check out Car Vertical. I'll put a link to their website in the description and in the pinned comment. Anyway, let's get on with the review. So what do you get for your extra money over the standard CLK 63? Obviously a massively uprated engine with stacks more horsepower, right? Well, no, actually you don't. It's pretty much the same 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8. All Mercedes did was tweak the inlet, the exhaust and the ECU and they've increased horsepower from 480 in the standard car to 507 here in the Black Series. So not a massive gain at all. Torque's the same as well, 630 newton metres. Now this engine has been hand built by a chap called Sandro Pierca, I think. Anyway, we'll find out what his handiwork is like later on because I'm going to launch this thing. You see, it's supposed to be 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds, but does it really? I'm going to find out. I'm also going to talk you through some of the things to look out for if you're buying one of these cars or just the normal CLK 63 in terms of reliability and stuff like that. But before we go further, let's just check out something else to do with this engine and the changes they made to it the exhaust. Now one of the great things about cars back in 2008 is that they weren't fitted with petrol particulate filters so you got to experience the full aural delights of their exhaust system. So let's have a listen to this Black Series. Go on, start it up. Oh, give it some revs. That's it, wait, 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 wait there. Okay, so, so that's interesting. So while it sounds great, Still, like modern cars, this one has a soft limiter. So when you're stationary and you want to experience the noise of that beautiful naturally aspirated V8, you can't. <laughs> you can only rev it to like 3000 RPM, but even then it does still sound good. So let's, let's hear it again, give it some more revs. Right, that's enough because it hasn't got a petrol particulate filter. I'm probably getting poisoned right now. 
as well as the tweaks to the exhaust and the engine. MG also tweaked the Black Series gearbox. Now it's the same seven speed torque converter auto that you got in the normal CLK63, but they reprogrammed it slightly to make it give better, faster and more responsive shifts. But we'll find out a bit more about that when I actually drive the thing. Another change they made was to give it this curious gear selector. So rather than the normal like big lever, you've got this small little knob that's made out of solid aluminium and it's, it's quite stiff. There's enough in the end, don't you? are probably thinking that a mild tweak to the engine, the exhaust and the gearbox certainly don't warrant a £30,000 premium over the standard CLK back in the day. And no, it doesn't. But then Mercedes did make quite a few of the changes and some substantial ones to the chassis. So this car is fitted with a rated coilover suspension. So it's got new springs, it's got new dampers with bump and rebound. So they're adjustable if you can be bothered to adjust them. You also get a limited slip differential on the rear axle and AMG even widened the car's track. So they've increased the width between the wheels on the rear axle by 66 millimeters and 75 millimeters on the front to improve cornering. That brings on to the styling changes over the standard CLK63 because the widened track means that Mercedes had to fit this car with some blistered wheel arches and that's what really makes this car stand out. I love just how aggressive this car looks from the front. They also gave it a redesigned, more aggressive bumper and look, we've got some carbon fibre bits here over these air intakes which are actually real there's no fakery there there's some more carbon fiber here at the back so this boot lip spoiler and this new rear diffuser mm, lovely they've also tweaked the rear bumper as well and the all important black series there just on the mg badge it is quite subtle finally at the sides apart from the obvious blistered wheel arches the only major change really are these upgraded forged alloy wheels 19 inches in diameter, which was considered big back in 2008. Oh, by the way, don't you just love this about the CLK? The way you have these frameless windows and frameless doors. Look at, I can't get out. <laughs> I didn't do it that way. See, frameless doors and windows. It's just so cool when you have the windows down. It's got a great silhouette, this car, hasn't it? Here on the inside, the most obvious change over the standard CLK 63 are these glorious bucket seats. They are wonderful. However, they are quite body hugging, which is great when you're going around corners quickly, but not ideal if you're a little bit large in size because you probably won't fit in them. If you can fit in them, they are actually very comfortable. Another major change which I like is the addition of lots of carbon fiber, especially on the door cards. Look at that. It's got the AMG logo embossed in it as well. It's really cool. Then there's this steering wheel which can't quite decide what shape it is. So it's like normal steering wheel round at the top. It goes a bit squarey at the sides and yeah. And then it's got a flattish bottom. Hmm. <laughs> Another thing I'm not sure about is this. Look, so a high performance car like this with a high revving V8, you know, it redlines over 7,000 RPM. But for some reason, the rev counter is only the same size as the clock. So Mercedes thinks it's just as important for you to know the precise time as it does your engine speed. Hmm, I'm not convinced about that. I am convinced about the little bit of badging we've got here, Black Series there, it's nice having that. But then there's a stop, start button down here. Yeah, it doesn't work on this car. I don't know if it's this car in particular or whether it worked or not. Look, you press it, nothing happens. Look, you have to turn the key. What's that all about? <laughs> also, what are all these blank switches about? This is a £100,000 car <laughs> and there's loads of blank switches there. What am I missing out on? I, I don't know. Maybe it's stuff like heating and cooling for the seats because obviously you don't get that with these buckets. But it just looked so cheap in such an expensive car. And then there's the fact that back in 2008, the interior quality of Mercedes wasn't exactly the best. Yeah, the squidgy materials, but bits like these climate control buttons are just very cheap feeling and I'm not even going to mention the the satellite navigation system because it's a 2008 satellite navigation system so it's pointless nowadays and then there's the fact that Mercedes used to use foot operated parking brakes look got a foot operated parking brake there's an extra pedal in here but that's not as annoying as the driving position because for some reason in this right hand drive car the the seating position is just so offset so I'm sitting 
so far right of the steering wheel. Look, look, if I do this, that's the center of my chest. So you're twisted that way. Yet the pedals are twisted that way. So you're kind of like playing a game of twister while you're driving along in your 500 horsepower spiky sports car. What's that all about? I also want to know what AMG was thinking when they decided to remove the CLK's rear seats. Now you're probably thinking, Matt, it's obvious this is a lightweight special. They've done that to reduce the weight. However, it's not a lightweight special. This thing weighs the same 1,760 kilos as a standard CLK with rear seats. Now, these areas are recessed, so you could use them for putting luggage in there, though it's very hard to get luggage in this car past these bucket seats, which don't move forward very much at all. I also want to know what's going on with <laughs> the fact you've got AMG branded floor mats here in the back for literally no one to appreciate. And there's another thing that's a bit annoying in terms of practicality. You see, for some reason, they've relocated the battery in this car, and it's, it's under here, right? Now, there are ports where you can connect to jump start it underneath the bonnet and places like that but if you need to replace the battery because it's dead or old or whatever you have to go see your mercedes tech and remove all these bits of trim to get the battery under there great another thing that hinders the clk black series practicality is this big strut brace that runs between the two rear shock towers now they do help increase the car's structural rigidity and you've got another one at the front between the two front shock towers yeah, they're part of the chassis upgrades I forgot to mention earlier. Here are the top search results. Thank you, Google. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> what the top search results are. Let's find out what the top driving results are. Because I'm going to take this car for a spin now. OK, finally time to see what this CLK Black Series is like to drive. And the first thing I'm going to do is... <laughs> do that because the engine is lovely that 6.2 litre naturally aspirated v8 just sings and sings all the way to its 7000 rpm red line it is an epic engine and it makes a real fruity noise as well let's do it again <laughs> yeah. so much fun so much fun but obviously you get that in the normal CLK 63, don't you? Just with a bit less horsepower. So what is this Black Series in particular like to drive? Well, the first thing is that even though it's got stiffer suspension, it doesn't actually feel any stiffer. In fact, it feels better over bumps than the standard car. That often is usually the way with uprated suspension. It just deals with bumps better. It just does. And the way this one's been set up is really, really nice. The interesting thing about this Black Series is that when AMG originally conceived it, they wanted it to be their version, the Porsche 911 GT3. So does it feel as sporty to drive as a 911 GT3 of a similar era? Well, here comes my first corner. We are going to find out. I'll tell you what, the front end's pretty good on this. Much better than it would be on a normal CLK63, but Porsche 911 GT3, not so much. <laughs> it's really good at getting its power down. I thought it was going to be struggling. I'd read reports about this being a bit of a, a tell happy monster and that the traction control wouldn't really help you out much, but this is doing fine. And I'm quite surprised by the steering. I thought it'd be awful, but it's not. It, it may be offset and a little bit uncomfortable, but it's got a nice weight to it and it's, it's really responsive. You know, it does feel like an aggressive, sporty car. Yeah, on the flip side, if you just dial it back a bit and you want to cruise, it's, it's not annoying in any way, shape or form. You can easily daily this thing as long as you can put up with the fuel consumption, which is going to be around 18 miles to the gallon. Oh, <laughs> well, if you can afford this car, this £100,000 car, you probably don't care. And you're probably just going to leave it in the garage anyway, appreciating. Anyway, I'm going to put the gearbox into manual mode and see how it is. Oh, there we go. Pulling away there, the traction control did have to intervene and it's totally dry. Oh, yeah, and, and there, do you know what? I take it all back. When you're in lower gears and in manual, and you haven't got the slushy automatic gearbox doing its own thing, yes, it does break traction pretty easily, and it's interesting. In fact, I'm gonna do it again. How 
the stability control seems to like pause for a bit. It, it, it lets the wheel spin up a bit and it's like wakes up and goes, oh, oh, am I supposed to do something? All right, I'll, I'll just curtail the power now. <laughs> By which point the car's already stepped out slightly. I'm gonna do it again, actually. Let's, let's get into, let's get into first gear. There we go, look, yeah, yeah, see? Oh, oh. Oh, I'll tell you what, in manual mode, the gearbox isn't as slow as I thought it would be. It's actually quite quick on the upshifts. I mean, it's no dual clutch system, but it's actually pretty decent. In a moment, I'm gonna launch this car to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. But before I do, I thought I'd talk you through some of the potential problems you could have if you're looking to buy one of these cars. So certain things to look out for, for the CLK Black Series or just the normal CLK 63. Let's start with this engine. Now it's normally very, very strong and reliable, but they can suffer occasionally with problems with the head bolts. And it's usually the head bolts at the back of the engine, which can corrode due to fluid leaks. And then fluid can get into the engine and cause a hydraulic lock, which will just write off the engine entirely. Another thing you might find is that when you start the car, you can get the odd rattle, and that can be the cam chain tensioner is failing. It's not a big deal, so you could get that repaired. Another thing to watch out for is juddering from the gearbox. The changes should actually be very smooth, so if they're not, it could be a warning sign. Now what you should do when you're on your test drive is do a few manual down changes to make sure it doesn't judder because that's when they'll really show up. The drop links and bushings for the anti-roll bars can wear out and a telltale sign is knocking when you go over a bump. Don't worry though, it's not the most expensive fix in the world. Check that the windows go up and down properly and that when you open, and close the doors, they do this little thing where they go back underneath the roof line like that. Also, just give them a bit of a hit and make sure they don't rattle. While the CLK did get anti-corrosion protection from the factory, it can still rust. And the places to look out for are the boot lid just under here, the rear wheel arches, the front wheel arches, the lower parts of the doors and the wings. The final thing to check is that if you hear weird clicking sound when you turn the ignition on, it could be that the stepper motor for the air conditioning has failed and that's a real pain because to replace it, you have to remove the whole dash. Finally then, let's see how quick this thing is really from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Especially 4.3 seconds, but we'll find out with my specialist timing gear up here. I'm gonna launch it, let's do it. Oh, a little bit of tire spin. We're off though. Whoa, that's good. Even though the wheels were spinning a bit at the beginning, did 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. I'll take that. 